YouTube and Snapchat and fuckers, welcome back to another installment of the Friday Wrap-Up. Well, it's October now, you know. Things are getting a little crazy. So, uh, got a good show today. But before we get into today's show, I want to tip my hat to today's libation. Today I'm going to be introducing a very old cocktail, which, you know, when it comes to cocktails, I, know I, I always like to try to tailor them to the season. So I was thinking to myself today, I said, Shelf, you know, what what could you do that's, you know, a little warm, a little fally now that the, you know, the fall weather is starting to set in. So, you know, when you think of fall, you think of September, you think of October, what do you think of? Pumpkins and apples, right? Well, we all know I'm not a big fucking fan of pumpkins, but I do like apples. So I made a, I, I, I racked my brain to come up with a cocktail featuring one of my favorite uh, libations, Applejack. Now, Applejack is actually one of the oldest distilled um, spirits in the United States. I mean, this goes all the way back to the colonial era. Fucking George Washington was sipping on his shit as he was crossing the Delaware. That's how old this stuff is. It was actually It's actually made in New Jersey. Um, and what Applejack is, it's kind of like a, a stronger version of an apple brandy. So it, it's kind of got that apple brandy kind of... Uh, flavor to it but it's got a little bit more of a kick right? they bought that shit at 80 proof which you know for you people that don't understand what the proof sets are on booze that's about 40 percent volume alcohol by volume so yeah it'll knock you on your ass so i racked my brain for a cocktail and it came to me um there was a very popular cocktail about the turn of the 20th century it was basically a martini made with applejack if you really want to know uh it was called a jack rose no, wasn't named after the fucking characters on the Titanic. Uh, the Jack part came from the Apple Jack, and the Rose part came from the color of the cocktail. Take a quick little gander at that. I mean, that pretty. It's a nice little rosish, rosyish color. Very simple cocktail to make. You take a shot and a half of Apple Jack. You put it in a cocktail shaker. Add about a half a shot of grenadine. And about three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Give it a real good fucking shake. Garnish it with a little lemon twist like that. And there you go. Azalu, to drink up and be somebody. That's 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 pretty delightful. It bounces around in your palate a little bit. Got the little tartness, little sweetness. Um, yeah, it's good. You know, you know what would have also been nice in that? A little cinnamon simple syrup to kind of. Give it more of a fally taste. Actually, like this, it's more reminiscent of a of, of a late summer cocktail. But I use a lot of Applejack in the fall and the winter, you know, especially around the holiday time. Makes a great sangria. So, you know, you'll be seeing it again. Don't you worry. Okay, so before we kick off today's show, had a big week. I was in the city for the first time in probably almost two fucking years on Sunday. Had to go into the city to do a little business. Man, let me tell you something. Fucking Manhattan. I mean, now I got there early. I mean, I didn't really hang around too much in, in, in Manhattan on Sunday. I, I got there early in the morning, and I was out of there by, like, you know, mid-afternoon. But the vibe is off. It, it doesn't feel like like New York City. I mean, plus you got these fucking mama looks walking up and down the street in a fucking mask. It's 8.30 in the morning, but where the fuck are you going? You're outside. Anyhow, so, get this shit. So I park, I'm, I'm coming down 44th Street, and, uh, you know, I, I figure, what I gotta park my truck. I didn't, it's fucking Sunday morning. I'm really not looking to put this thing in a garage. Usually there's parking on the street. So 44th Street, they have like, you know, a bunch of diplomatic spots. You know, it says, you know, if you're a diplomat, you can park there. You got to have the fucking special plate. Anyway, if you park in front of those signs, you should be all right. So anyway, I see a spot behind two motorcycles. And between it was between two motorcycles and an MTA van. Empty on the corner. I swing my truck in. I park nice, nice. And I'm looking and I says, you know, I don't know. I see a cop on the corner. So I asked the cop, I said, I said, excuse me, is it all right if I park over here? Am I good or am I going to get a ticket? He goes, no, no, no. It's, you, you parked in front of the diplomat signs. You're fine. It's Sunday. It's not a loading zone. I said, you sure? I said, I'm going to probably come back and grab it right around like 2 two, you know, two o'clock, 2.30. Like that. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it, this motherfucker. I come back at 2 o'clock. Guess what I got? Fucking $115 ticket. More than a harm, son of a bitch. I hope somebody fucking shoots him right in the asshole. 
cocksucker. I mean, some of these fucking cops are fucking dumb, okay? Just, I mean, you, you're looking right at it. You go, yeah, 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 fine. Five minutes later, he must have put a fucking ticket on it, son of a bitch. So anyway, that fucking agitated me. So as I'm walking down 44th Street, after I park my, my truck, I see like, you know, like a couple of restaurants. You know how they have those fucking sheds that are outside? Like they put up those little like... You know, dining shanties in the street where, you know, if you can't come inside, you can fucking dine outside. So as I'm walking down the street, I see, like, fucking three homeless people spread out in there. They're using them as fucking, like, condos at night. So they... <laughs> I said, well, that can't be fucking sanitary. So when I'm coming back later that afternoon, I pass the same shanties on. I set up with the tables and the chairs and everything. And uh, I, I see one of the waiters and I say, hey, come over here. I says, you know, this morning when I walked past this, I said you had like a couple of homeless people. He goes, yeah, I know. He goes, every fucking day we got to chase them. They're coming here. They're pissing in the air. They're sleeping in here. And I says, you got people fucking eating in there. Remind me not to dine in your establishment. I mean, but yeah. So the vibe in Manhattan is off. These fucking assholes with their goddamn masks. It makes me want to fucking throw punch all of them. I swear to Christ. It's a fucking disgrace what's happening. It really is. Well, that is quite delightful, I must say. Anyhow, so, on your COVID special report, Dr. Anthony Fauci wants to fucking cancel Christmas, but could you believe this fucking shit? And they call me the fucking Grinch? Yeah, so he went on TV, because <laughs> he loves the fucking television, this motherfucker. He goes on TV the other day, and he says he's not quite sure if it would be safe yet to gather for holiday events like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Imagine we had Christmas last year, everybody was fucking fine. We had Christmas the year before that, everybody was fucking fine. But what the fuck is this guy fucking talking about? He, every time there's a holiday or some kind of joy, the son of a bitch wants to fucking cancel it. And get this shit, okay? Disney made a fucking documentary about him and stuck him on fucking Disney+. Plus. Apparently he's fucking goofy. Okay? Imagine, son of a fucking bitch. Yeah, so the Grinch... <laughs> Fauci the Grinch wants to cancel fucking Christmas. Unbelievable. Fucking goddamn it, unbelievable. So, get your tickets out, kids. Get ready. Hop aboard. The crazy train's about to leave the station. Oh, but Okay, first stop, New York City. Told you about them dining sheds. Um, so, <laughs> but get this shit. Mayor Muppet Hands has privately confirmed that he plans to run for fucking governor. Can you believe this shit? He didn't cause enough fucking problems. He destroyed New York City. Now he wants to continue to destroy the fucking state. Hochul said she plans on fucking running. I mean, this is just going to be a fucking shit show. Can't we just get one fucking decent Republican to run for fucking governor? Do I got to do it? I mean, really, do I have to fucking do this shit? Okay, haven't I got enough to do? Okay. God damn it. Imagine Governor fucking Muppet Hands. Holy shit. I, I, I think I'd I have to move. I swear to God, that's it. That's when I relocate to fucking Florida. Okay, they make this fucking jerk off, scarecrow fucking a, a governor. I'm out. Apparently, he's under investigation right now by the NYPD because he never repaid uh, the city funds. He took money out of the city funding, uh, campaign funds, to run for that fucking bullshit president run that he tried. That, and he never fucking repaid them. <laughs> So he's under investigation for that. I hope they fucking bury him. Anyway, next stop, Florida. Okay, we got two stops to make in Orlando. First stop, <laughs> a 17-year-old teenager was crowned the first ever trans homecoming queen. But what the fuck is going on? Take a look at this, okay? I mean, it's not even pretty. I, I, I can see if he was a fucking pretty looking broad. Fine. Look at the size of this fucking guy's feet. They're about the size of my face. Yeah. And I called him a guy. Okay. Because that's what he is. He's a guy who thinks he's a woman. Put on a fucking dress. They made him a homecoming queen. But where are these kids' parents? Okay. Where? Where are these fucking kids' parents? That's what I want to know. It's one thing if you're gay. I get that. Okay. That's a genetic thing. You're born that way. I understand. I, 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 I'm sorry. I have a hard time buying that, you know... All these people suddenly wash, they're in the wrong fucking body. But I mean, come on. Holy shit. 
Now it's trickling over into the high schools where now the homecoming queens can be a homecoming guy. I, it's just a fucking... It makes my brain hurt. Next stop in Orlando, a 31-year-old drama teacher by the name of Brittany Lopez Murray was caught having sex with one of her 14-year-old students in her car. But where the fuck were these teachers when I was in high school? Can I know? Holy fucking shit, she's 31 years old and banging a 14-year-old kid. Okay? I mean, and, and apparently the kid didn't rat her out either. He was having a time of his life. What 14-year-old wouldn't? Okay? So here's what happened. Over the summer, apparently this broad was sitting around thinking about this 14-year-old kid. She starts texting him and says she misses him. So I don't know. They, they hooked up. She'd pick him up from football practice, whatever. They'd fucking pop, 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 pop one out in the car. They, she's sending him nudes and all kinds of shit and all kinds of explicit text messages. He's saying he's enjoying the fucking... And... <laughs> This kid's sister sees some text messages from the teacher and goes and fucking tells his father. Now, the father, here's where, here's where I have the problem, okay? This is bad parenting, okay? The father fucking flips out and, and rats the broad out. Now, if my son came to me and he said to me, Pop, I'm banging my fucking teacher. I'm going to look at him, high five him, and go, your ass better be on a fucking honor roll then. I don't know what to tell you, kid. You know, I mean, like... <laughs> I, I get it. it. It it's the other way around if it's a girl, like if it was my daughter, holy shit, I'd be doing twenty five to life. But I mean it's diff I mean it's i I'm sorry, it's a double standard. I hate that you know what? I'll say it. I'll say it for you fucking people. It's a double fucking standard, okay? I don't understand what kind of three dollar bill this kid has had as a father. He goes and fucking rats this kid out. Rats out the teacher. Yeah, fourteen years old banging his fucking book. Every I, it, it feels like every like four or five months. I hear of one of these teachers going fucking nuts and banging a student out. But, like, what's happening? I, I mean, because I know there's not a lot of real fucking men left out there. I mean, I, her name is Lopez Murray, so I'm assuming she's married. Okay, so the husband isn't fucking di punching her ticket. Maybe he's, you know, you know, <laughs> maybe he's not too well in doubt. Um... <laughs> So maybe he's not punching a ticket, but she goes and bangs out a fucking 14 year old. I would love to know what this 14 year old kid looks like. Good for her. <laughs> I just want to know why the fuck they didn't have these teachers when I was in high school. There was a couple of lookers here and there when I was in school. Not many, but there was a few. You know, I mean, <laughs> Miss Kennedy was a. Could make a priest kick in a stained glass window. I don't know what the fuck. I, I really don't know. I don't know where these teachers were when I was a kid. Kind of disappointing. Anyway, next stop. Speaking of fucking crazy, California, Britney Spears. Okay, so now, I, I, I really haven't mentioned this too much because it, it's kind of dumb. But, you know, the whole Britney Spears conservatorship drama bullshit going on back and forth. You guys know what I'm talking about. So she basically won. They're going to end the conservatorship. So before she shows up, that she has to show up to court for the final deposition, whatever the judge has to make the final ruling, whatever the fuck they're going to do. And this crazy bitch, before she fucking shows up for court, starts posting naked pictures of herself on fucking Instagram. But this is exactly why she needs 24-hour fucking supervision and needs to be you know, reined in and controlled. She's out of it. She can't make a fucking normal fucking decision. First of all, here's the problem with this. Now... Take a look. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with her pictures. I mean, I could look at her, this, this chick naked all day long. It ain't going to upset me. But here's the thing, okay? This is where I, I have a problem. She has teenage boys or, like, preteen boys. Like, they're using fucking Instagram and all this other shit. No fucking... I mean, it's psychologically going to fuck a kid up to see their mother naked squeezing her tits. Okay? I mean, nobody wants to see that shit. Think, Brittany, think. And you do that like the couple of days before you got to show up and go to court? I mean, what in the actual fuck is wrong with this bitch? See, Disney. Disney fucks everything up. Anybody who works for Disney when they're kids, they don't come out right. Like, look at fucking Miley Cyrus. I mean, that chick is just fucking... She's all kinds of batshit crazy. She's like a bag full of cats crazy. This one's no fucking different. 
I mean, I think after this conservatorship's over, she's going to give herself a fucking mohawk and start pissing on the sidewalk. I don't know. I mean, holy shit. I kind of I kind of want to see if she goes crazy. I kind of <laughs> hope she does. <laughs> and this next stop, this is a stop the crazy train is yet to make. You know, so the next stop is space. The final frontier. William Shatner's boldly going where... No fat little 90-year-old Canadian Jew has gone before. That's right. Captain Kirk is finally going into outer space. Now, for those of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, because maybe he just fucking fell off of a turnip truck, William Shatner played Captain Kirk in the Star Trek series, the Star Trek movies. I grew up watching that shit. I love Star Trek. I'll be the first one to admit it. I don't give a fuck you don't like it. Go fuck yourself. Anyhow, it's just a sci-fi show. It's make-believe. Some of these people just find, you know, they live and die for that shit, okay? It's mindless entertainment. I find it enjoyable. But I think even William Shatner is starting to believe his own bullshit. I mean, he's a 90-year-old man, Okay? I mean, he's a fat little knight. How the fuck did he get cleared to go into outer space? Now, apparently he's going on Jeff Bezos' rocket ship. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? I'm afraid I'm going to shat myself and re-entry. Like, I can't imagine sitting next to William Shatner on a rocket ship. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this? You're 90 years old. And during Discovery Week, he's diving with sharks, shitting in his wetsuit. Now he wants to take a fuck. What is he got a death wish? I think he, I think he's out. I think he's lived too long, and he's just looking for a quick way out. I don't think he saved enough money from the Star Trek royalties. I think he's running out of cash, and he's looking for a quick way to punch out. Son of a bitch! <laughs> All right, kids. Part of the show you've probably been waiting for your fucking sports update. Motherfucking Yankees, man. You know, listen. I'll be the first one to admit when I'm wrong, but sometimes I do hate when I'm right. You know, I said earlier, and I said it all throughout the year. I mean, the Yankees are just fucking, were well, a goddamn d disaster all year long. And I even said it last week that they're probably going to make the wild card, but they ain't going to get much further than that. And, you know, it didn't seem like they would even make the wild card last weekend because they had a three-game series against the Rays. They blew the first two. Sunday, I mean, it was like the longest game in the fucking world, no score. I got so twisted at one point, I turned around and stopped watching it. And I missed that Aaron Judge walk-off home run. Only fucking run in the game. Well, they replayed it. Delightful. Every place went fucking wild. And I'm... I I'm like, all right, okay, so they made it into the fucking wild card. All right, let's see what happens. I was I was excited about this. I mean, this is it's October baseball, okay? So all you fucking Mets fans, <laughs> I, I know, your team was your first place up until the All-Star break, and then like typical Mets, they just fucking fell apart. The Mets should have been in, 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 in the postseason, and guess where they are in October? No place to be found. So at least my Yankees, as much as they fucking suck this year, at least played one game in October. All right, so, uh, I mean, I must count for something. That that gave me some little pleasure. So I was excited Tuesday to see what was going to happen. Although I kind of knew. In the back of my head, I didn't want to say it, but I knew. Listen, they swept the fucking Red Sox in the last series that they played. The mind. How, I don't know. But they did. But now you're going back to, you're going to Fenway Park to play a fucking playoff game against the Red Sox. These motherfuckers are out for blood, and Fenway's a bitch to fucking play in. I mean, I think it was, um, ah, I forgot who hit that ball. Maybe Stanton? I mean, he, 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 got, he got on it. He didn't get under it enough, but, I mean, he shot a nice fucking line drive over the outfield, hit the green monster, and fucking bounced back in. Any other ballpark, that's a home run. Not that that would have fucking won the game. It was at the beginning of the game, but, listen... Once Garrett Cole threw out his first pitch, I knew it was game over. I know. I just, I know. The way he put that fuck. It, what did he throw? I think six pitches. I, I mean, I got up and fucking left in the seventh inning. He says, I can't be bothered. I walked out of the fucking bar. I didn't need to see the game anymore. I knew it was going to happen. Unfortunately, the Yankees took another shit. But you see, I'm a glasses half full kind of guy. I know you probably think I'm a pessimist, but I'm not. See, I, I, I look at this as a positive thing. And the positive aspect here is Aaron Boone has to get fired now. Okay? I mean, the, the, 
I mean, his contract is up. I cannot possibly see them fucking renewing his contract after this season. The guy has been an absolute clusterfuck for as long as he's been the goddamn manager of the Yankees. If they renew his fucking contract after this, I, I have to I have to question the cognitive abilities of Cashman and and the fucking Steinbrenner kids. I don't, I mean, what the fuck? Really, seriously. You could pull any fucking Mama Luke in the Bronx off the street and put him in fucking pinstripes and give him the manager's job, and they'd do a better fucking job than Bill, than Boom. That, that's the God's honest truth. So the Phillies, they didn't make it. Uh, I think they collapsed in the last seven games. What a shame. Because you know what? They really... I, I, I got to give Joe Girardi a lot of credit. He did a lot with that team. He kept a fucking otherwise mediocre team in second place for most of the year. I wish it would have paid off, but, you know, I mean, the Phillies haven't seen a playoff in maybe 10 years, I think. You know, I mean, they'll get there. I, I have no doubt about that, but I, 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 I blame the players for that because Girardi did a hell of a fucking job managing that team. He really did. Uh, the National League wild card, I mean, that was pretty much a no-brainer. Dodgers beat the Cardinals. Um, Vegas has good odds on the Do on the Dodgers to win the World Series. So, you know, if you're looking to make a fucking bet, I think that would be a pretty safe one. So moving on to the NFL. Holy shit, what a fucking miraculous Sunday it was. I couldn't fucking believe it. The Giants and the Jets both won. Both of them. I thought for sure the Giants were going to fucking eat it this week. I really did. I, two of their top offense men are out. They're playing the Saints. The Saints are a solid team. Uh, you know, but Danny Dimes showed up. He threw some fucking, he threw some bombs. I mean, the, the Giants really pulled that one out, I have to say. I got to give it to them. I got to tip my hat to them. If they play like that every fucking week, there's no reason why we ain't play, We ain't going to be in the playoffs. Now, I know. Don't get hysterical, T. It's only one fucking game they won. Probably the only one for the, se for the season. But let me savor it, okay? I got to savor it because it might be the only fucking one. All right? And even the Jets fucking won one in overtime. Who would have thought that? My uh, my friend, Ter uh, my friends Teresa and Eddie went to the game, and I thought for sure Teresa would have jinxed them, but she didn't. Um, I guess Eddie was good luck, so I don't know. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, even the Jets won. That that's a good one. All right. So your Sunday lineup for this week and Jets and Falcons. Here's an odd one at 9 30 a.m. on Sunday. Saints playing in Washington at one, Giants and Cowboys at 425. So there you go. You could actually sit in front of the fucking tube all day on Sunday, morning to night, catch three different football games, and life is good. I mean there's other shit on too, but who cares about those little teams? Um on what the fuck is that? We are gonna talk about the many saints in Newark. Now, I mentioned this last last Friday. I was all excited about this. I was waiting for like a year and a half for this fucking movie. It was all hyped up. It was, you know, the prequel to The Sopranos. Who, how Tony Soprano ended up being Tony Soprano. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. It sucked. Okay? Fucking horrible. Horrible. Sucked. Now, I knew it wasn't going to be really about Tony Soprano. He was kind of like a supporting character in it. And I knew by the name of the movie, The Many Saints in Newark, it was actually going to be about Chris Moltisanti's father, Dickie, who, in, if you ever watch The Sopranos, I mean, it all t ties back to that. Tony Soprano often mentioned how Dickie Moltisanti was like a, a, a mentor to him and kind of was responsible for him end ending up in the fuck him up. Now, the term... The name Moltisanti is Italian for many saints. So, yeah, I mean, if you speak Italian, you kind of figured that one out. Now, let's let's break this fucking movie down, all right? So, I knew right going into it, it was going to be mostly about how Dickie's influence on Tony. I really didn't think it would be a lot, a lot about Tony Soprano, but it was like a period piece. It was set like in the 60s, early 70s. I love gangster movies in that in that era, because that was the fucking heyday. You know, that's when shit was just like, you know, they were like movie stars back then. You had the big old Cadillacs and Lincolns and shit. It was a good time. So it was set like in late 60s, early 70s in Newark. Uh, you know, 
You had like some. You had a couple of. Uh, you had well. You had Ray Liotta, who's your fucking you know wise guy movie alum. He played Dicky Moltisanti's father, Hollywood Dick. Now that's basically how this movie opens up. You got two versions of young Tony Soprano. You got him as a little fat kid, and then him as a teenager. Gandolfini's son played him as a teenager. Personally, I like the little fat kid better. So it opens up with Dicky and little fat Tony going to meet. His father, who's coming back from Italy, who married some broad over there and brought her back. So now you see this girl, her name is Giuseppina, uh, played by uh, Ma Michaela De Rossi. Who, you know, at first I'm like, wow, she's pretty. And then all of a sudden I see this fucking gigantic mole on her chin. I swear to God, it looked like another fucking person growing out of it. If, this, if there was no chin there, she kind of looked a little bit like Penelope Cruz back in the day. But like... Beautiful girl, except for this fucking chin. It ruined it for me right there and there. I was done. I could have turned it off right there. I mean, I can't stand large moles coming off of it. I mean, it came off of her chin by like an inch and a half, and that's all I could fucking look at. So for the rest of the fucking movie, every time this broad's on, t all I'm looking at is the fucking mole. I just want to go over and push it or flick it or do something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. It, it, it completely fucking ruined it for me. So that's one. Okay, <laughs> I mean, she ended up being Dickie's Gumada in the movie, and I'm thinking to myself, but his wife is a ten times better looking broad. I mean, she's got no fucking mole on her chin, you know. So anyway, then you got Ray Liotta, who I, I don't know what happened to Ray Liotta. Okay, I, I, he's like one, I, he was one like phony laugh away from having a fucking stroke. I mean, the guy looked like he was gonna stroke out in every scene. I don't know. So here's my thing with these fucking movies. I have a problem when they get non-Italian actors to play Italians. Because they don't do it right. Okay, Italians have a certain way about them. That if you're an Italian actor, you can kind of emulate that because it's basically shit you learned when you grow up. You know what I mean? But like these non-Italian actors, they try to... Especially if they fucking character actors, Jesus Christ. They try to emulate, you know, these old school gangsters, you know, like the guys from North Jersey, the guys from Brooklyn, Queens. They try to emulate that street swag and they get it wrong every fucking time. Okay? It comes off like a bad impression, like a bad uh, Andrew Dice Clay impression. And even he's doing a bad impression of us. I find it offensive, personally. Now, I'm not one of these cancel culture people that think everybody should lose their fucking job. I'm just saying. Like, for example, you know, like the guy who played Dickie Moltisanti, he's he's half Italian. He's a pizza bagel. But he grew up in, in Massachusetts. So his accent drove me fucking crazy because he was... Sometimes he would sound like he's got a Boston accent. Then it sounded like he was doing a bad Tony impression, a Tony Soprano impression. Then it sounded like he was doing a bad John Travolta impression. Like, you know, when someone goes, oh, you know, like something like that. There's a certain way to do it. You can't do it if you're a fucking non-Italian. If you're a Metagon, you can't do it. That's what we call you fucking, you know, non-Guineas, okay? That's the slang word that we use for white people, Metagon. You know, you, oh, you know, it came off sounding like a, like you were doing a bad John Travolta impression from Saturday Night Fever. I can't fucking stand it, and they overuse it. You pull that out from time to time. Again, if you're a real Guinea, you know that. Okay, so then my problem is, again, using non-Italian actors to play Italians. They don't say the fucking words right. Like, you see what I said before? I said gumara, meaning that's that's what we call, you know, like the girlfriends. So if you had a girlfriend, oh, this is my gumara, you know, even like, and then it became a slang term for married wise guys who were fucking around on the side. You know, that's this gumara. But when non-Italians say it, they get it wrong. So they had the... Uh, the woman who played Livia Soprano, and I believe she's Italian, Vera Farmiga. She said it wrong. Oh, his Kumara. His Gumara. Uh, it's like fucking nails on a chalkboard. But all these non guineas don't say the words right. They like mozzarella. Like they were saying Moltisanti wrong for the entire movie. Like here, the guy who played Junior, another Jew, you know, he, he kept referring to him as Dickie Moltisanti. Now, you're supposed to be playing an Italian. You'd think Dominic Cianese, who played the original Junior Soprano, would have said it like that? No. Okay? So that's my point. So that, that again, that, that fucking ruins it for me. The guy who played Tony Soprano's father, John Bernthal, 
Nice guy. I like them in the Punisher. I don't like him in the... So, bottom line, they use too many non-Italians to play Italians. Like, borrow a fucking note out of Scorsese's book. Most of the fucking guys that he had playing gangsters in his movie were Italians or actual gangsters. Like, yeah, Bully Walnuts, Tony Sirico, right? He's not acting. He's an actual... He was an actual fucking enforcer down on Mulberry Street back in the day. Frank Vincent. Another guy. He was from fucking Brooklyn. He was another leg breaker. You know, like, so these guys are all fucking knock around guys. They, and, 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 and Joe Pesci too. That's why he plays that character so well. It's not really fucking acting for him. Okay? Joe Pesci used to run fucking limos and, limos and restaurants in the Bronx for the fucking North Jersey guys. Come on. I mean... He was the he was responsible for Frankie Valley getting his fucking start. Yeah, hate to break it to you, but he was connected too. So the, a lot of these fucking guys, they play gangsters so well because they're not really acting. So they should have peppered a few of them in there. If they would if they would have taken this movie and made it into a fucking mini series for like an eight hour mini series, it probably would have been a lot better. Okay, but. Trying to cram everything into two fucking hours, it sucked. Then, of course, David Chase, the fucking the, the director, producer, has to try to work that little race aspect into it with the fucking Newark riots and shit. I mean, it just, it was a fucking disaster, this whole goddamn movie, okay? Between the mole and the people who can't speak Italian, it was a fucking disaster. The only good parts about it were the guy, was the guy who played um, Silvio in the movie, okay? John Magro. He's Italian, but he got that fucking character. He got Steven Van Zandt's character down fucking pat. Now, you probably wonder, well, Steven Van Zandt is an Italian. Yeah, he is, actually. Fun fact about Steven Van Zandt, the guy who played the original Silvio Dante, he's Galabrese. He grew up in North Jersey. His parents were Italian. His father left, and his mother remarried to a guy named Van Zandt, and Van Zandt fucking adopted him, so he took the name, but he's a fucking Galabrese. So, again, that's why Silvio played such a good fucking character. But this guy who played young Silvio did a good job. The guy who played the young Paulie Walnuts could eat a fucking dick. He sucked. Okay? And now, don't get me started on Gandolfini's kid. Now, everything I, re I read about this movie, everybody praised Michael Gandolfini, James Gandolfini's son. Oh, what a great job he did. Oh, he's a spitting image of his father, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll give you this. Yeah, he looks just like his father. You know what? Because it's his son. But I don't know if this kid can't act, was doing a bad impression of his father, or if he's mildly fucking retarded because he sounded like he was retarded in the entire movie. He opened his mouth and went, holy fucking shit, this one's a fucking window licker. Look at this shit. Okay? And he talks like this. And I'm like, what the fuck? Now, I know James Gandolfini had a slight lisp. It worked for his character. Because yeah, he had a fucked up tooth that looked like yeah, like a bird tooth, but I don't know if this kid actually has a lash for if he was trying. But he did a fucking horrible job. Okay, he should never act in another fucking movie again. I don't know who told him to act that way, or if that's again the way he really talks. But holy fucking shit, this movie. So just to show you, I'm not such a hard hearted guy. I watched it Friday. I was fucking. I was uh, disgusted with it. He says, you know what? I'm going to watch it again. Says, After I let it sink in, Saturday night, he says, I'm going to watch this again. Just maybe I judged it too harshly the first time around. I'm going to pour myself a nice little cocktail. I'm going to sit down, have a little dinner, and I'll watch the fucking movie again. And I did. And I hated it even fucking more. Holy shit. I mean, I'm not going to ruin the entire thing. There's some scenes I could go into fucking details on, but I won't. All I'm going to say is, what a fucking piece of shit. I waited around a year. Matter of fact, I watched that that new Clint Eastwood movie recently too, Cry Macho, which was about a 90-year-old man driving around uh, Mexico with a kid and a chicken. That was fucking better than this piece of shit. I can't remember the last time I seen a newer movie and thought, wow, that was a good movie. I'm starting to get like my father. Okay, where, you know, I'm saying to myself, you know, they just don't make fucking movies like they used to. I watched the fucking Steven Seagal movie a week ago, Under Siege, and I remember seeing this in the movie theaters with my old man, and I'm like, that was a good fucking movie. Not, not that it was written great or anything like that, it was just mindless action, but just, it was a good movie. It's a good watch. 
These fucking things today, holy fucking shit, they make my stomach fucking turn. And that is my take on the many saints in Newark. The whole movie, okay, was equivalent to you going out, meeting the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, and you're talking to her, and you're getting all excited, and you're getting all hopeful because she's throwing out all the right signals, and you get her home, and you're getting ready to get it on, and you find out she's got two rubber tits and a dick, okay? That's what this movie is. I give it two rubber tits and a dick. Your PSA. Here's my fucking pet peeve. Grown-ups, adults, who don't fucking listen. I, 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 I don't get this. Okay, like, I do a lot of things where I have to train people, and I give them simple instructions, like write down your name and address. And they can't seem to fucking understand that and get it right. Like, I... I yeah, be here at 9 o'clock. They come strolling in at 10.30. I'm late. You fucking watch don't work. Like, I just, I don't get it. Like, what the fuck? Why Why are people so fucking stupid? Like, what is in the fucking water that is making these people so motherfucking dumb? I can't take it anymore. I want to fucking just smash everybody's head into concrete. Okay? I, I really don't, I don't, I don't fucking get it. How are people this fucking dumb? Anyway, kids, Monday is Columbus Day for those of you that are a stranger to the calendar. Uh, and Columbus Day, they keep wanting to change the name of it to Indigenous Peoples Day. If someone wishes you a happy Indigenous Peoples Day, please, by all means, karate chop them across the fucking throat. It's Columbus Day. It's an Italian day, okay? I don't want to hear this shit Christopher Columbus was a fucking racist. Give me a fucking break, okay? Please. I mean... He discovered America. All right, so what? Okay, maybe he gave a few Indians a fucking low-paying job. What the fuck were they doing before he got here? They were sitting around in a circle getting high, living in tents, okay? It's pretty much like Hempstead these days. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so all right, fine. They had some free labor out of it. What, the fucking Indians weren't exactly, you know, the most friendliest of fucking people. They called them savages for a reason. When they got their blood up, they would, they would have fucking war parties, raid fucking... Uh, ranches and, and, and homesteads, and guess what they would do? They'd kill all the men, rape all the women, and sell the fucking... They'd, kill the, the, they'd scalp the boys, and then they'd sell the girls into slavery. You don't see us fucking protesting. You don't see us wanting to change the term Indian summer to, you know, white man summer. Get the fuck out of here. Seriously. Leave it alone. They got casinos now, okay? They're fine. All is good, Okay. You, you don't believe me? Go to Mohegan Sun. Try and get comped on a fucking poker tournament. Let's see what happens. You could drop 20 G's on a fucking table. They still charge you fucking $400 for a fucking room. How about fungal? It's fucking Columbus Day. Happy Columbus Day. Anyway, kids, that's been your, that's been your Friday wrap-up. Stay COVID-less. No mask, don't ask. Haters can kiss my ass. And remember, who loves you, babe? Until I see you again, I'll see you when I see you.